Your Republican opponents in the primary, their line of attack so far, and I assume it's going to be in the future, is Ted Cruz is eloquent, Ted Cruz is articulate, Ted Cruz stood up against Obamacare. Well, that's a terrible thing for them to say about me. <laughs> but there's one thing Ted Cruz lacks, and Governor, former Governor Rick Perry even said it. He wasn't a governor. He has no executive experience. He's essentially a freshman senator. We had a freshman senator in the White House under Obama. We need somebody with concrete executive governing experience. Ted Cruz's time is not now, it's in the future. What do you say to that argument? Very glad to have the chance to address that argument. You know, it, it, it's interesting. I'm always amused when, when the media treats it somehow as newsworthy. When governors say they think governors would make a better president. <laughs> and I will say, for all of us with some historical memory, we remember the argument of governor versus senator has been somewhat historically convenient. So, in 1980, when the strong conservative candidate was Ronald Reagan, a governor, not a single voice from Washington went on television and said, we need a governor. Then we needed a former congressman by the name of George Herbert Walker Bush. Fast forward to 1996, when the moderate establishment choice was Bob Dole. Not a single voice from Washington went on TV and said, we need a governor. Then we need an elder statesman from the Senate. Fast forward to 2008 when that choice was John McCain. None of those voices said, we need a governor. Then we need yet another senator. This election cycle, the primary moderate establishment candidates in the field are governors. And suddenly, every pundit on Fox News, every hour says, we need a governor. <laughs> Roughly an equal number of presidents have been senators and governors. Truth of the matter is, there have been good presidents and bad presidents who were both. Jimmy Carter was a governor. He was a train wreck. Barack Obama is not a horrible president because he was a senator. Barack Obama is a horrible president because he's a radical ideologue, an unmitigated socialist who has undermined America across the globe. And let me give you what I should suggest should be the test for Republican primary voters in 2016. I don't think it should be what job title the person had, senator or governor. I think it should be a simple question of who has stood and led and fought for principle. And let me suggest a way to answer that. Sit down and make a list of the 10 or 12 biggest fights of the last several years. You make your own list. You decide what were the battles that mattered the most. And ask of every one of the candidates in the field who has stood and led on them. So if a candidate says he opposes Obamacare, great. When have you stood up and fought to stop it? If a candidate says he opposes the debt and the debt ceiling that's bankrupting our kids and grandkids, terrific. When have you stood up and fought to stop it? If he says he opposes executive amnesty, wonderful. When have you stood up and led the fight to stop Obama's unconstitutional executive amnesty? If a candidate says he supports the First Amendment, he supports free speech, he supports religious liberty, wonderful. Where were you in the fight in Indiana? More than a few candidates, including some of those governors, when the fight in Indiana was happening, suddenly chose that time to rearrange their sock drawer. <laughs> if you say you support the Second Amendment, fantastic. 
Where were you in the fight when Barack Obama was trying to push his unconstitutional gun control laws? If you say you support privacy, fabulous. Where were you in fighting to end the Obama administration's illegal bulk collection of phone metadata? If you say you support the Tenth Amendment, terrific. Where were you leading the fight to stop Common Core and have you embraced Common Core just a few months ago? <laughs> If you say you support life and marriage, when have you stood up and fought? If you say you support Israel, when have you stood up and fought? If you say you oppose radical Islamic terrorism, when have you stood up and fought? If you say you oppose Iran getting nuclear weapons, when have you stood up and fought? If we look at the field in 2016, there are a lot of good people running. Senators, governors, people who I like, who I respect, who are friends of mine. But if you look at that list we just went through together, and you ask of each of those candidates, did you stand up and lead in any meaningful way on each of those issues? For most of the candidates, you can find one issue. Sometimes you can find two. But it is rather stunning, looking at the field, just how many of the members of the field have not engaged in any way whatsoever. And we are in a time of crisis. We don't need someone who says on the campaign trail, trust me, I'll do this. We need a proven conservative with the scars to prove it. Yeah.